Hey, what's up, Tribe family? It's me, Narada African Hair God, and I'm going to show you how I created this beautiful mini twist slash flat twist style on my client. I did use my shoulder mount for this exclusively. Um, I just got a couple of good angles. I did not capture the whole styling process, but you'll be able to get a general idea of how I parted and did each of the twists. So um, this is how it turned out. Let me show you the inspiration for this style. She sent me this pic from our own Green Thumb Salon page on Instagram. And Henny did this style on her client here. And it's, as you can see, it's a little bit different. I actually, when she sent the picture, I only got it from like one angle. So I kind of did my own version and interpretation of it, but I kind of already had an idea uh, as far as like how this style went, but I figured she definitely wanted to have her hair kind of tied up out of her face for the front half. So you'll see how I uh, put my own little Africa hair guy signature spin on it. So we are, of course, I pre-detangled. This is after her hair has been shampooed and conditioned. I went and pre-detangled her hair. Um, while applying leave-in conditioner to it um, and just had a section off in two strand twists. Um, I did most of her head, the back of her head, and oh, I should probably turn it off. Sorry about that. I went ahead and did most of her back section of mini twists. So I just wanted to, I needed to get into the motion before I started recording. So I'm just showing you how I'm parting um, the mini twists. I, I parted in rows. I'm working with one half of the back of her head and just parting a row across. And that just seemed to be the easiest way for me. As you can see, um, her hair is rather thick. This is actually the same model that I featured in my um, dim and brush um, review video. And I'll see if I can like kind of throw in a quick little clip so you can see um, her hair in its entirety if you want to check out her hair or whatever. It's been a long time since she's come and see me. It's been over uh, about about a year, actually. Um, here I am just applying some grease to her scalp. I apply just to the scalp um, in the root area. I am wetting her hair. I prefer to do um, twists on wet hair. I prefer to work with the shrinkage and the curl pattern when I am doing twists. I like the texture and spring action that it gives the hair. Um, a lot of people complain about frizz with their, you know, twists or whatever, but I find that when you do twists or braids or whatever you do on wet or damp hair and you allow the curl to activate, it actually works in your benefit. So maybe that's why, um, a lot of people tell me, they're like, you know, my twists never come out looking like yours. It might just be your process. It could just be your hair. It could be a number of things, but, um, twisting on wet hair has always been my preference, so... But there are times where, you know, you probably would want to um, do it on dry hair. Even when you do, if you notice, a lot of stylists will do flat twist out some things. They'll blow dry and stretch the hair first um, to make it easier and to get a smoother result for the flat twist. But then they'll go and do what? They'll put a bunch of mousse and then start twisting it so that the mousse will activate the curl and engage the shrinkage which will help the strands kind of pull into itself as you're twisting so um you know it's, it's all personal preference but it's just mine so the product that i am applying throughout the mid strand to the ends is just the elastic qp leave-in conditioner and that's also what i use to detangle her hair and pre-section it off. I think I also use the Apogee um, Moisture Rich Leave-In as well. It comes in the yellow label. And um, you can just see me twisting here. I didn't spend too much time recording me twisting the mini twist because it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is just my systematic approach. Um, I find that I work faster just going in rows, parting along the row. Um, and I, I would imagine it would be easier for you to take down after the fact, um, you know, when you've worn the style for a few weeks. Um, so I'm trying to think, what else should I mention here? Uh, mm, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, y'all know how to do some two-strand twists. It's, it's, it's nothing 
too specific or revolutionary about this method. I do sometimes go in um, and just detangle just to make sure the hair is smooth. Her hair will pull back and revert. Like her pullback game is strong. So um, I've kind of become familiar with her hair over the years, but I will be honest and say that her hair definitely gave me a challenge like the first time. The first couple of times I did her hair, but I just had to learn how to navigate her hair. Um, and I look at natural hair like that with anyone's hair. I don't look at it as something that's difficult or um, an obstacle. I just look at it as, okay, I need to find what works and what doesn't work for her hair, okay? Um, okay, so I don't really show me doing mini twists here. I'm just kind of showing you myself parting some rows at the top um i kind of did kind of a horseshoe like just going across the back and then once i got to the top and i realized that going across didn't work i started to just part more um i guess these would be vertical or horizontal it just depends on what perspective you're looking at it from but um i, I have been getting a lot of requests from people to talk about how i part hair um, and this video is not the best example for that, but um, I just kind of wanted to show a little bit of the process, but I'll probably do that with um, using both this shoulder mount so you can see from my personal perspective, as well as a camera positioned away from, you know, in third person, from a third person view. Um, I think it's important to see both sides. So here I am in the front now. I've already pre-sectioned off the area for the flat twist. I just literally parted um, from ear to ear, from the center of her ear, going up to the top of her head and all the way around. And so I, I knew that the flat twists that Henny did were a little bit different, um, but I never really liked to make every anyone's hair like a carbon copy of you know whatever picture that they bring in i think it's always great when a stylist or an artist is able to kind of put their own spin and their own interpretation on it and i think my client definitely appreciates that as well i i just i prefer individuality you know i hate when everyone's kind of walking around looking exactly the same it's just kind of boring to me um again just using grease on her scalp um i did for each flat twist go in and re-wet the hair like i said i like to twist on wet hair i feel that it gives me the smoothest sleekest result um and now i am just going to flat twist again this is not the ideal angle for you to see me flat twist but i mean when i'm flat twisting this is pretty much what i see unless i lean my head over my hands to really <laughs> look what's going on but um yep there it goes and I did ask her if um, she felt any tension while I was uh, twisting because she is tender-headed, like I said before, but she um, she said she didn't feel anything throughout the whole process. So that, that made me feel good. That just kind of confirmed to me that I've really become familiar and comfortable with her and her hair. So even after, um, you know, all this time away from her and just even with working with these damn gloves, because ugh, that shit was annoying. Um, okay, so yeah, just twisting down to the ends. I'm not going to show that process because y'all have already seen that. All right, so again, parting off for the next flat twist here. Sometimes I part from the back. Sometimes I part from the front. Um, from this angle, I wanted to kind of just um, establish the width of the flat twist, meaning where the flat twist will end and just kind of curve it out. So on these flat twists, I'm trying to make the curves parallel um, to just kind of go against the curvature of the flat twist on the other side. I felt that it would give her a lot of visual interest with the style um, and kind of play on the dichotomy of kind of a serpentine kind of zigzagging design on one side and just like a, a basic curve on the other. And also the curves on this side of her head that I'm working on will produce a smaller flat twist versus the other side where they're a little bit larger. And I'll explain why. Um, well, I'm, I guess I might as well explain why. 
Um, so when the thing with flat twist is that the further the flat twist has to travel, the larger the flat twist will become because it's encompassing more and more hair, especially on longer hair. You will find that the, the flat twist will become um, thicker in size. Um, and that goes for flat twist, cornrows, etc. Um, but when I when I started doing the flat twist, I really I didn't really have an, a design in mind. I just kind of um, just kind of worked with her hair and just kind of it just all kind of came together. Um, generally, when you are doing styles, you do want to have like some sort of idea. And I did know that I was going to part her hair from ear to ear and do flat twists within that front section, but I did not know how I was going to create the design. At first, I thought I was going to do zigzags or, you know, maybe just, I don't know. It just kind of, it just kind of happened. Um, even when I got to this side, I, I didn't know what I was going to do because typically I just kind of work with the side part. But I was like, oh, that's kind of boring. Let's switch it up. Let's do something different. So I kind of gave her a very abstract kind of part in her hair towards the, uh, the uh, top left center of her head. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of talking at this point. I don't really know <laughs> what else to talk about. But um, as I was saying, um, I think that in the future i definitely want to record more styles like this i think it definitely does give a different perspective on me styling hair um i i do see the limitations of using this mount though um it can be kind of difficult aiming the camera sometimes because we use our head to kind of look and see we don't really use our shoulder so there will be times and there were times on here where I actually did have the, the camera at a weird angle, um, but I just kind of cut it out. But I, I'll be honest to say like for a first time kind of, you know, video uh, demonstration, it, I think it worked out pretty good. I think we saw what we need to see. Um, it just was kind of annoying. And after a while it did like the shoulder shove did kind of hurt. Um, I don't think this is really meant to be like an action shot kind of mount. I think it's just easier for like a camera person to like hold a camera without actually holding the camera. I think it just kind of helps keep it steady. Um, the camera was pretty shaky on my shoulder with all my movement. I did have to uh, apply some video stabilization filters on these video clips to just make it easier for you to view and watch and looking back on it now it looks nothing like it did before because it was like y'all would have gotten motion sickness watching me like whip this camera around but it just kind of worked out um it did so um something i forgot to mention here is you'll see me kind of lift the section up and down and what I'm doing is I'm trying to check the width of each of the flat twists as I'm parting it to make sure that it's consistent throughout from the front to the end of the flat twist, okay? And um, there we go. Just flat twisting it back. And again, just using nothing but water and hair grease. Um, and I did sometimes use uh, the Maurice texture King gel pomade just to help give some smoothness and hold um, to the roots of her flat twist in some areas where I found it a bit challenging to kind of grip the hair with these gloves but I'm very very happy with how um, this style turned out and again just applying some of the elastic QP leave-in again to just activate her curl and I find that the the leave-in sometimes I like to use as a styler as I said before because it just kind of helps to activate the curl and it also helps to clump the hair together and just smooth the hair and give it a shiny, smoother appearance. As you can see, her ends will kind of tangle up really easily. And so I really have to take my time when I am separating and parting off her hair in its natural state. Even when it's pre-detangled, as it dries, her hair just likes to 
just kind of lock and stay in place. It like her strands just love to hug together. And um, when I when I don't know if y'all if I said this or not, but when I am separating and parting her hair, I know it looks like I'm pulling and like it's painful. But if you actually pay attention, I use my my um, smaller fingers to kind of create like this buffer where I relieve the tension of me separating her hair. Let me see if you see it here. Yeah, you see that? Like I kind of, so the, I'm not pulling, the tension isn't like being experienced directly on her scalp. So yeah, it, I, I just, I move kind of fast cause I, I'm just used to it at this point. But um, if you go back and watch, you'll, you'll kind of see what I mean here. Um, and also I find that wetting the hair as you are flat twisting it helps it to just smooth out better. You see her, her ends will want to kind of wrap around each other and tangle a little bit. The water just helps soften the hair and makes it easier. Um, and yep, I believe we are on our last flat twist here. I can't believe I've been talking for like 16 minutes, okay. Cause I mean the style the style is pretty simple. It's just it's simple to me, but you know it's pretty repetitive. So it's not really much for me to say. Uh, if you notice, as I'm flat twisting, I am smoothing the strands as I m stitch each twist. Um, I think that's really important. Um, I'm also keeping my fingers and hands very very close to the scalp as I am twisting the strands along the scalp. Okay. So at this point, we finished all the flat twists. So I am creating the kind of the design in the front. So I am basically just taking one flat twist at a time and just overlapping it, kind of crisscrossing it into like this basket weave. Um, really simple, really easy to do. You just kind of alternate sides. So I'm gonna grab from the left side, cross it over, grab from the right side, cross it over the center. And the bigger flat twist, I'm just kind of twirling to kind of compress and tighten the uh, flat twists so they're not too too bulky and the previous twists will overlap and lock all the other twists in place so you just continue this method all the way around um, really really simple and I love the look that it gives it kind of creates this sort of um, like kind of like a pompadour situation but almost like like a cornucopia where it's like holding all of these twists together and then in the back it's just like it's just like overflowing full of twists and texture and body and fullness um i just love playing i like the the neatness in the front with the wild and crazy in the back it's just i don't know i i guess that's just how i look at it but yeah um pretty simple and easy to do um if you're pretty good with flat touch you could probably recreate this this style yourself honestly only thing i wish i could have done and maybe this would have been impossible with her hair thickness i wish i would have made some of the flat twists a little bit smaller um you can see some of her flat twists the twists end up being very bulky and larger than the rest of her mini twists in the back but again it was one of those things you just kind of can't help this style took me about oh no oh, i forgot to mention just put a pin um, I think I used a couple pins to just kind of lock it in place. This style took me about uh, four hours to complete. Um, and that includes shampoo, conditioning, detangling, sectioning, twisting, all of that. So, um, and the gloves definitely didn't help. And, you know, setting up and making sure the camera was in a good spot definitely didn't help. But here's the finished look. Here's the 360. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos like this, feel free to leave them below. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Until the next one, be blessed.